Welcome to E3 Rehab. I'm Dr. Mark Sertica, physical therapist. Today, I'm going to discuss how to implement leg extensions in three phases after an ACL reconstruction. But for you to get the most out of this video, I highly recommend watching our two previous videos that outline why leg extensions are actually safe and quite functional after an ACL reconstruction. I'll link those in the description. Before diving in, I want to briefly talk about quad sets and straight leg raises. These are probably the two most commonly prescribed exercises immediately after surgery, and they are extremely beneficial at helping you regain full knee extension range of motion, but, and I really want to emphasize this, they are not quad strengthening exercises. The knee is straight, and there's no external knee flexion moment. As a disclaimer, you should always consult with your physical therapist and surgeon prior to initiating any new exercises after an ACL reconstruction. Additionally, the phases I'm going to outline are meant to serve as a guideline because circumstances will vary between individuals, so these recommendations need to be tailored to meet your specific goals and needs. Phase one, zero to four weeks. Under the supervision or guidance of a physical therapist, Isometric leg extensions performed between 60 and 90 degrees of knee flexion can be initiated immediately after surgery. Why isometrics in this particular range of motion? Two reasons. Number one, Gary Smith in 1973 showed us that isometric knee extension is strongest between 45 and 75 degrees of knee flexion. And number two, Bain and et al. in 1995 demonstrated that there's no strain on the ACL during an isometric knee extension contraction up to 80% intensity for two seconds at 60 degrees or 90 degrees of knee flexion. So I would err on the side of caution and stay within that range of motion. If you don't have access to a leg extension machine, you can be creative by tying a belt, band, or towel around the leg of a chair or table and your shin and perform the exact same movement. Ideally, these would be performed unilaterally so the parameters can be dosed appropriately for each leg. For example, the unaffected limb should still be trained for strength and hypertrophy so it doesn't atrophy or become deconditioned. For the affected limb, the dosage will vary significantly based on your tolerance. You might be able to do two to three sets of 10 to 20 repetitions for one to two second holds at 40 to 60% intensity every other day or you might be able to do three to five sets of 20 to 30 second holds at 30 to 50% intensity every day. Because it can be difficult to quantify intensity, consider a rating of perceived exertion of seven out of 10 or less while keeping the movement comfortable. It's a learning process, but you're really just trying to facilitate that knee extensor mechanism. And just like with any other exercise after an injury or surgery, you're gonna wanna try to minimize the amount of swelling or discomfort, and so they can also be good gauges of progress. Phase two, four to 12 weeks, you're still gonna be performing isometrics, but you'll hopefully be able to ramp up the intensity. Simultaneously, you'll start isotonic leg extensions through a restricted range of motion. This information is modeled based on several studies looking at anterior knee laxity, such as Mickelson 2000, Isberg 2006, Hain 2007, and Fukuda 2013, showing that it's safe to do so. So while continuing to challenge that unaffected side through a full range of motion, the surgical side will be trained between 90 and 45 to 40 degrees of knee flexion, while once again, slowly ramping up that intensity as strength and tolerance improve. So your parameters might be three to five sets of 10 to 15 repetitions every other day around that seven out of 10 RPE. Phase three, 12 weeks and onward. You're gonna continue the isometrics at higher intensities, but also shorter durations per repetition and ramping up that intensity much quicker during each repetition to enhance rate of force development. Additionally, you're gradually building up to that full arc of motion on the leg extension and beginning to bridge that asymmetrical gap in strength and hypertrophy between the surgical and non-surgical limb and hopefully actually becoming even stronger than you were prior to the injury. As a quick summary, phase one, zero to four weeks, isometrics between 60 and 90 degrees of knee flexion. Phase two, four to 12 weeks, isometrics plus isotonics in a restricted range of motion between 90 and 40 degrees of knee flexion. Phase three, 12 weeks onward, isometrics plus full range of motion isotonics. 
my goal with this video is that rather than being fearful of leg extensions, we can develop a framework on how to utilize them in a program after an ACL reconstruction using the research and maintaining the same guiding principles after any injury or surgery, which involves gradually progressing over time while respecting healing timelines and pain. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, leave some comments below so I can answer any questions that you might have, and also head over to our website, e3rehab.com. You can check out our podcast, blog, programs, and so much more. Peace.